Do you ever wonder what doctors are really listening for when they ask you to take a deep breath through their stethoscope? In this episode, I'll show you exactly what we're listening for. The doctor is in. So welcome back. This is Dr. Sal, your pal. And in this episode, I'm gonna take you through the three most important breath sounds that we as doctors are listening for when we lift up your shirt, apply a stethoscope, and say, take a deep breath for me. So, first off, this might seem a little uh, trite and obvious, but the breath sounds are caused by the inhalation of breath th from the atmosphere, through your mouth apparatus, down your windpipe, and into a branching network that we call your bronchi and alveoli. So let me just uh, draw that out here. So if you imagine uh, this is your mouth here of Bob the breather. This is his um, windpipe, also known as a trachea. It then branches like a Fibonacci sequence into two uh, major trunks, which we call the bronchi. And then after that, it continues splitting just like a tree in a Fibonacci sequence, keeps branching, branching, branching. Then at the end of all this branching, there's some nice juicy little bubbles on the end, which we call alveoli, which are actually used to do the work of uh, air conduction and um, air filtration and air extraction. So this is also kind of a fractal. This uh, major trunk here could represent your lungs, but it could also represent one of these tributaries. So if you could continue magnifying and going down with a microscope, it keeps looking like this the further you go. So the lung is basically based on a fractal um, uh, algorithm. Anyway, enough about that. So the first thing you have to understand is what normal breath sounds sound like. So I'm gonna give you a quick five second um, uh, hearing and then you'll come back and then show you the three most common abnormal breath sounds that any doctor worth their craft is able to pick up and is listening for to detect pathology. So first off, normal breath sounds. Okay, so that should sound fairly characteristic. Um, no, no magic there. I'll just erase this uh, mouth here. It's a little distracting. Okay, now for the three sounds that we're listening for that allows us to detect some kind of anomaly in the breathing apparatus, some kind of pathology going on, something wrong, some kind of illness, some kind of disease. The first one is fairly high up and we call that one stridor. Stridor. So stridor is caused by some kind of uh, impediment in the upper airway. So somewhere close up by where the mouth and the and the um, first uh, windpipe exists. If there's something blocking in the way, so a piece of mucus, a coin, which tends to happen in kids. So there's some kind of five cent or fifty cent or whatever you want to put there. Um, Any or tumor in older people anything blocking this airway or another common one would be uh, something like croup creates this sound called stridor so let's get a listen to what stridor sounds like it's quite different from the regular breath sounds that you just heard all right so that was stridor anytime a doc hears stridor immediately comes to mind the fact that something is blocking the person's, the individual's uh, upper airway. There's something in the way. At that point, we use x-rays, for example, or CT or whatever to determine what it is that's causing the blockage. Or if it's a kid and it's croup, you would just assume that it's, it's none of these other things here. It's just mucus and some uh, constriction of the airway. Very common in winter. All right, so that's most important sound number one, which is stridor. The next one that, that we listen for Routinely is something called a wheeze. Wheeze. I actually get this quite often because I've had juvenile asthma um, since I was a little tiny guy. So I've heard this in myself very often. Wheezing denotes 
uh, a narrowing of these bigger airways going down. Normally when you breathe through your breathing apparatus, you're breathing through a large aperture, which is fairly quiet. When you choke off that aperture, it's like trying to breathe through a straw. It creates very turbulent, um, vib vibratory, noisy noises, which specifically sound like a wheeze. So let's just listen to the difference between a wheeze now, a stridor and breath sounds. So here comes a wheeze. Okay, so that is wheezing. Now wheezing generally tends to be diffuse. It's usually spread all over the lungs. So it's usually very easy to detect. It's one of those type of things that if you hear it in one spot, likely it's gonna be all over. That is not always the case, but very often that's the case. So you could basically just listen in one sample zone and get information for the entire lung field. Again, this is in general, it's not always the case. There are cases where, um, for example, you had bronchitis and it was just unilateral, so it's just on one side, so you just hear the wheezing in one affected zone. But generally in conditions like asthma or cardiac asthma, um, pump failure, the wheezing is spread on both sides, it's bilateral, and you could detect it just by listening in one ear. You don't have to spend your time exhaustively going over the entire um, structure. All right, so that's stridor, wheeze, and now for the third big guy is crackles. Now crackles, um, crackles are the sound of fluid with air bubbling past it, causing it to crack like a small whip or like, um, like oceans crashing because of wind pushing the water. Liquids, whether it's uh, exudate, which is caused by pump failure from the heart, or um, sputum, snot, causes crackles. So I'll put that one over here, crackles. Now, crackles are fairly interesting because if this is a, uh, say I have someone's chest here, this is their back, so I'm going there. Crackles are kind of interesting because um, when you when you listen to crackles, for example, if I just hear crackles in one zone, like here in the upper zone here in this person's back, so this is their neck here, etc. This traps. So if you if I listen here and I hear crackles here and nowhere else, that to me would suggest that this person has pneumonia. So there's fluid collected in this area and just this area. So that would uh, suggest to me that this person's got crackles. Then another type of crackles is gravity dependent. So it's all across the bases. So when I listen at this person's back here, I'm hearing crackles all across the bases. These upper zones here are clear and free. That tends to suggest not so much infection Sometimes infection, but more often uh, something called heart failure, where fluid builds up in the lungs, and because of gravity uh, pulling the fluid down, it makes it um, relegates it to the bases. So call it the basement of the lungs. It is possible also for um, bronchitis sometimes to also present like that, and very often with bronchitis you get a mixture, so you, you'll get crackles in spots and wheezing. So those are the three most important sounds. Now there's a little trick with this uh, presentation. There's also a fourth sound that's also very important, but it's not a sound at all. It's the absolute sound of silence. And that is actually very disturbing when you hear that in a part of the lung. So say I came and put my stethoscope here, on this guy's back here, and I don't hear any breath moving through there at all. Immediately a few things come to mind. One, obviously air can't get in and out of that, that position there. Uh, they can't superimpose themselves at the same time. It's gotta be one or the other. So if there's no air there, it means that either this area is so full of fluid, so, so full of pus, like the empyema, that I can't hear any breath moving through there, or he's had a bleed in there, or he has something called a pneumothorax where his lung basically ruptured and air ran inside where it's not supposed to be and it's stuck there and can't get back out. Or he's had um, surgery to his lung removing that piece so that's why I don't hear any uh, uh, lung movement there anymore. 
or he has such severe asthma that this whole area here is basically crumpled up and collapsed because no air can get in anymore. So the absence of sounds is actually very disturbing. In fact, sometimes more so than all these other fancy sounds. Now again, as I alluded to earlier, this is not an exhaustive, um, uh, uh, like a complete treatise on all the different breath sounds. There are many more. There's, there's very exotic, bizarre things like uh, plural rubs and pericardial rubs and stuff that you might hear once in your entire career. But obviously those, those aren't the run of the mill day to day stuff that we're looking for. These would be the three most common, the big breath sounds that we're looking for to determine if somebody is healthy, ill, needs our help or needs to go home. So that ladies and gentlemen is what we're listening for when we listen to your lungs and why we do it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time with some more amazing doctor secrets. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Get notified of new videos. Subscribe now.